Hey out there, League of Warriors. I just read a book, a really great book, called The Status Game by Will Storr. And in this video, I'm going to explain what I learned in that book and how it applies to the criminal law and even a little bit how it applies to all of life. So if you're interested in growth and you're interested in um, different ways of thinking and how that can be applied to all areas of our life and even to criminal law, stay tuned. This is the video for you. My name is attorney Lance Fryer, and I'm a defense attorney in Linwood, Washington. My law firm has been defending people charged with crimes all throughout Washington State for more than 20 years, and I'm putting out these videos to help educate the public. So if you find this useful, please like and please subscribe. More people will get the help they need. Now I'm just going to jump right into it. I got a, uh, this book um, called The Status Game by Will Storr, and um, I tend to listen to books on audio, so I get the audio version, and I listen to the book. and it really struck a chord with me about some things that I've already talked about on this channel. You often hear me talk about how everybody you know, in the world, but also everyone in the criminal system is self-interested. We all do things for a certain reason, and keeping that in mind is really important when looking at the motivations and the actions of the actors in the criminal justice system, and again, and all through life. And so this book, the status game, the author uh, says that basically all of us uh, humans are programmed to seek status. And so I suppose the self-interest that I talked about before and that controls and dictates the actions of the people in the system uh, in this sense would be to seek a certain status. And the author would say that there are status games that we've played all throughout time. And the different types of status games uh, described would be a dominance game, which means uh, basically using a coercion or intimidation to gain status. Um, a virtue game, which is showing you you have uh, you know virtuistic and dogmatic uh, uh, applying certain principles, and you do it better than others uh, can get you status. And there's also a success game. Hey, the more successful I am, um, then the more uh, status I have, the more money I make. Um, uh, those type of things uh, will provide status. And why uh, do we care about status? Well, uh, human beings, um, ever since we got together in groups, um, those that have higher social status in the group will have more access to things. You have access to better food, better shelter, shelter uh, more mating opportunities, um, things like that. And so as um, we gather in groups, we will do things to obtain status just instinctually as humans uh, that will actually affect the way we behave because we want that status. Uh, the author notes a study that says uh, there were 60,000 people and 123 countries were studied. And there was a very consistent correlation between an individual's feeling of well-being uh, uh, which was directly proportional to the amount of respect they felt by the groups that they participated in. And people can have all types of different groups. There could be your home group. There could be your professional group. Uh, there can be a sporting group. And in each of those types of situations, we are doing things to try to obtain status. So how might that apply in criminal law? Well, how it applies, in my opinion, is that so many people that haven't been involved in the criminal system think that it's some type of search for justice, right, or for truth, and that the people involved really care about justice and truth and things like that. And I would say in a particular individual case, that might be true, okay? But when you take the thousands and hundreds of thousands of cases together, there's simply not capacity for, for that for people. There's different reasons why certain things happen in cases and certain types of results happen. And I think uh, we can think about that as a status game. Um, when we think about um, prosecutors and why they might do certain things, well, it might be to, they might be playing a status game, right? Hey, they might feel virtue by doing a certain type of, getting a certain type of result, or they might be playing a success game where, hey, if they get a certain type of result in the case, if they have a job where they can be promoted higher up in the system, um, they might try harder because 
they feel more status if they get a certain type of conviction. And everyone's different, but it's important that uh, if you are involved in the criminal system as a suspect, as a defendant, to, to think about that not everything is about you, it's about them, right? They're doing what they're doing for a certain reason, and it might be because of a status gain. Additionally, if you think about um, uh, victims' advocates or, um, you know, uh, different, uh, even law enforcement personnel could be playing a virtue game where they feel virtuous for doing something, and the more virtuous they can show they are, the more uh, status and acclaim they gain by their social peers, right? And uh, we are programmed to feel good when we are accepted by others. We feel terrible when we're rejected by others. And so um, just keep your eyes open for what you see going on, right? When a lawyer wears a suit, that is trying to show status. Hey, I have a certain status. I'm in the courtroom. I'm the authority figure because I'm wearing a suit. Would I have the same authority if I was wearing a t-shirt and shorts? Probably not, right? The same way if you see people walking on the street with a Rolex watch. Well, a Rolex watch would, I don't have one, but that might signal, hey, I'm successful, you know, and the combination of a virtue game and a, uh, a success game, they call that a uh, prestige game, right? A whole level of prestige. The more prestige you have, the more uh, favorable treatment you're going to get from others. Uh, the author will also point out that uh, people that are defined as beautiful get better treatment than people that are defined that, that aren't so beautiful, even amongst people that they know. Um, and so that just goes to show you how much is going on in a criminal case um, that might not have to do anything particular with the facts of your case, right? So this is an offshoot again about how everybody is self-interested. And when you are doing things to help your criminal case, you have to think about what are the things that I can do that will allow the deciders to do what I want while maintaining their status, okay? Will the prosecutor feel very good and maintain a good status amongst their peers if they just dismiss all the cases, if they're just a pushover? Probably not, okay? And will a prosecutor uh, maintain a high level of status if they go to trial every time and convict everybody? Well, they might with some people, but they might not with others. You know, that'd be so difficult on the court staff, on the judge. The defense bar would hate them if they don't act reasonable in trying to, you know, treat defendants as humans. And so it's one way we can depersonalize what's going on in the criminal court system as we think about, hey, everybody is playing some version of a status game that is affecting what they are doing. And this is not the only thing going on. And, um, but it's, it's important to realize that that's how we interact as humans. That's how we are programmed to interact as humans. And I think if you, you really feel it on the inside, you might find some truth to it, that we tend to seek out like-minded individuals and we tend to do things to gain acclaim and status in their eyes. And biologically, when we have a higher status uh, over time, you know, from history, uh, we tend to be given greater uh, rewards, greater salaries, uh, greater uh, respect. Just think about the status that celebrities have and, and people are waiting on them hand and foot at times or following what they do or copying them, right? And so um, I want you to keep that in mind and going through your criminal case that, hey, listen to your attorney because your attorney hopefully is, even if not consciously clued into this, is subconsciously clued in to what are the ways that we can have you do things so we can assert your case to the prosecutor, to the court, to the jury, to get them to see it work your way while giving them a way to maintain their status in the group that they are in and dealing with? Because people will not do things that diminish their status. If someone loses status, you may know someone in your life who had a, a business and they lost it or they had a a marriage that they really valued and gave them status and they lost it. And then all of a sudden their feeling of self-worth is gone. They can be depressed. They feel terrible. Why would anyone ever do that voluntarily? They won't. And that's why uh, when we're going to do defense work, we don't just push things straight towards a trial. We can always go to a trial. What we want to try to do is try to get a result, get an offer, get something that lets you control the outcome by your behavior, and I just want you to keep in mind 
that when the system is letting you down and people don't seem to be listening and the judge doesn't care what happened or it seems like the prosecutor doesn't care what happened, that type of stuff, there's a lot of complicated factors going on. You know, do what your attorney says and you'll have a much better chance for a decent result. So I highly recommend anyone get that book. It's uh, If you get the audio book, it's, it's read by the author. And it's going to open your eyes to politics and religion and all different types of things from that author's point of view. And I, I found some validity to it for me. Everyone's going to have their own opinion, but I hope you'll find it useful. And if you found this video useful, we hope that you like and subscribe because more people get to see it and more people get the help they need. More importantly, if you have a criminal case, you need some type of help with a criminal matter, feel free to give my office a call. We've been doing this for more than 20 years. We'll listen to what happened, we'll identify a way forward, and we will be there for you. Thank you. Thank you.